Yo, what's up everybody? My name is Jay Hayden. Yes, and I'm in charge of this week's 19 for 20, like it or not. Okay, civil disobedience, let's do this. Quick disclaimer, I'm not smart. You all know this. I'm learning, I wanna keep learning. This is me sharing what I'm still in the process of learning about, yeah? Okay, so let's define it. In the dictionary, civil disobedience is defined as the refusal to comply with certain laws or to pay taxes and fines as a peaceful form of political protest. Where does that come from? Well, there was a guy, an abolitionist, Henry David Thoreau, look him up. He coined the term civil disobedience in an 1848 essay, which described his refusal to pay the state poll tax imposed by a warmongering and slaveholding U.S. government. He wasn't having it. He was like, nah, nah, uh-uh, screw this shit. Arrest me, send me to jail because this shit ain't right. I mean, he used other words, but you get it. His view was essentially that if people's human rights are being violated by the government, it is our moral obligation as human beings to do something about it, even if that means disobeying the law. This was adopted by Martin Luther King Jr. and other civil rights activists of the 50s and 60s, many of whom were arrested and imprisoned for breaking laws intended to maintain and uphold segregation. Think Rosa Parks refusing to move to the back of the bus or civil rights activists like John Lewis sitting in at segregated lunch counters and being arrested for it. Throughout history, acts of civil disobedience famously have helped to force a reassessment of society's moral parameters. The Boston Tea Party, the suffragette movement, the resistance to British rule in India led by Gandhi, the US Civil Rights Movement, to name a few, are all instances where civil disobedience proved to be an important mechanism for social change. You know, as I, as I read more and watch more, I'm finding that peaceful protests and acts of nonviolent civil disobedience performed by minorities are often classified and quickly labeled as riots. And this helps stereotype the protesters, delegitimize the movement being made. I guess criminalizing it also allows a government to act and... Well, you should Google Sharpeville, South Africa. Google Tiananmen Square. When a fight for equality succeeds, history seems to remember it as a revolution, not as a riot. Truthfully, without both forms, legal protests and civil disobedience, revolutions as we know them, they wouldn't exist. You know, maybe if we change the way we speak about the current protests, we can understand where they're coming from. Maybe if we keep on asking questions and educating ourselves, we can position ourselves to take significant action, which is the only way to create significant change. As the uh, late great freedom writer and congressman John Lewis said, never ever be afraid to make some noise and get in good trouble, necessary trouble.